so often in our lives we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. Joy comes when you're spontaneous. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself. And most of us have no clue who we are. And so a big part of my work, if you've ever been to an event, you know, is to get people to do things spontaneously without thinking, because that's when the real you shows up. That's when the energy comes alive. And when you do that, when you start to connect your true nature, suddenly there's energy available for you to set a higher standard for what you want in your life. That's what this is really all about. And when I talk about standards, when I talk about, you know, shoulds versus musts, think about your own life. I know there have been areas in your life where some point in time you just shifted and you raised the standard and your life changed. Remember a time when you've dealt with this emotion successfully in the past. Remember a time when you've dealt with this emotion successfully in the past. So if all of a sudden you start to feel depressed, that's a pretty negative feeling. I first of all would not call it depression. I'd say a little bit down. But the first thing you do is you go, okay, I'm feeling this terrible feeling. I start to feel depressed. Well, what am I really feeling? Well, I'm really just feeling a little bit down. Okay, great. You know what? That's great. I appreciate it. That's a message. I need to get curious. What is that message? What's the message this thing's trying to give me? And what depression's message usually is, by the way, is you need to reset your priorities. That you don't feel like you're in control. That you got too many things going at once. You, don't, you feel out of control when you're depressed. So what we have to do is set some priorities and go do the first one on your list. That's what the message is telling you. You feel out of control. The way to get in control, reset your priorities and go do one thing and complete it. The minute you do, your self-esteem will go right back up. So that's a message. So what's the message it's offering me? And by the way, I'm going to teach you the nine most powerful emotions that you probably experience, what their messages are. So you won't have to wonder about this. You'll know what they are. Step four, get yourself to feel reassured by remembering times when you've dealt with this in the past. Have you ever felt a little bit down before, what you used to call depressed? How many have ever felt that way in the past? Let me see your hands. How many have dealt with it? Let me see your show of hands. Great, if you remember that, two things happen. You're gonna feel reassured you can deal with it, plus you're gonna remember how you did it, which means you can use what you did in the past to change it right now. Why wait? Most of us forget the best parts of our past, which is how we dealt with things and turned them around. We just remember the negative feelings. That's kind of weird. Maybe you need to manage our memories better. Remember the things that have resources for us and forget the things that don't. Because whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. We live who we believe we are. That's just how it works. It's just kind of like, I'll give you an example. Look at your physical body. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing. Not your goals, not your desires, but your standards. The identity you have for yourself. If your standard is you're an athlete, then there's a certain amount of strength, a muscle tone, and energy that's available in your body on a regular basis because that's who you are. And so you do whatever is necessary to maintain that identity. Again, the strongest force in the human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. Because if you don't know who you are, you wouldn't know how to act. Once you lock in on that identity, your brain finds a way to keep you there. If you say, uh, you know, man, I've, I'm overweight, I've always been overweight, I'm big boned, and that's the story you've got, then you're going to always find a way to get back there. That's your settling point. That's your identity. That's where things lock in. Number five, get certain. Get certain that you can handle anything like this in the future. Get certain. Not only can you deal with the emotion you have right now, but what you should do is use this as an opportunity to be certain for yourself. Get yourself certain. If it ever happens in the future, I'll handle this emotion quicker and easier. Get certain that you can handle anything like this in the future by rehearsing yourself dealing with it in the future. In other words, think of a time in the future where this depression could have come up and see yourself, feel yourself rehearsing again. Use this as a tool of empowerment. So you remember a time when you were depressed before, you a little bit down, you turned it around. It took you a little while, but you turned it around. You remember what you did. Oh, I dealt with this before, I can deal with it again. And then you say, let me take this opportunity to get certain that I can handle this if it ever came up in the future. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to sit down right now, and I'm going to think of, okay, what kind of things might happen in the future? I might get depressed. Well, I might expect something didn't work, feel bad about it. Let me think of a time like that. Okay, let me see myself, hear myself, feel myself, deal with it. You see here and feel yourself dealing with it easily. And you do this two, three, or four times. If you keep doing it two, three, or four times, then in the future when it comes up, guess what your brain will do? Your brain will go, oh, I can handle this. 
I'm already prepared. How many are following the logic of this? Let me see your hands. Okay? So get certain you can deal with it in the future by rehearsing. And by the way, remember this. You might want to put this in your notes. Your brain cannot tell the difference between something you vividly imagine and something you actually experience. Your brain cannot tell the difference between something you vividly imagine, when you see it, you hear it, you feel it, you taste it, you touch it, you smell it in your, in your mind, and something that actually occurs. If you doubt this, have you ever had a dream or was so real, you had every physical response to it? How many have had a dream like that? Okay, you can have a dream anytime you want, even while you're awake. All you have to do is rehearse something in your mind enough times vividly enough and it's real. If you over and over again rehearse yourself dealing with emotion easily, then it's real. Next time it comes up, you've already got the programming. You already have the resources to turn around in a heartbeat. Then this emotional message, it's dealt with for the future, not just for today. And the sixth step, take action and change your life. Whatever the message is, take the action that you need to take and change your life. Do something. Doing something always will change how you feel. You feel bad because you're not doing anything. And by the way, you'll continue to feel bad until you do something to change. So if you do anything, it'll improve you and move you in the direction you want to go. People are skeptical or pessimistic for good reason. I know when I first started doing what I was doing, you know, when I went to Germany and people said it was Hitler because I had people going, yes, you know, it's like there have been a lot of people over the years who have provided some form of insight, but then they had an agenda of something they were trying to do to people. And so I get that. And also, as a masculine male myself, you know, somebody's got to earn the right for, for them to coach me. And so he doesn't know me from squat, right? You might think I'm just some pump-up motivational speaker. He doesn't understand the strategy or, you know, running 74 companies, doing over $6 billion in business, have I had no business background to start with. So it might be interesting for you to consider uh, not trying to get him to go to a seminar, but maybe get him to just watch the Netflix special on Tony Robbins' I'm Not Your Guru. If you've not seen it, a lot of people are super skeptical, can watch that for an hour, hour and 45 minutes, and they really get to see what's real. Um, because you see behind the scenes, you see what a seminar is really like, even more than this. So those of you who haven't seen that, you might want to take a look at it. So that usually will bring someone to start saying, holy cow, this is different. This isn't just some pump up stuff. And part of this, because, you know, obviously I know the power of energy, but if all you have is energy and you don't have any strategy, you're going nowhere. But I also think, you know, the most powerful thing you can do is remember what I said, you know, on the relationship day. What you bring to the table, instead of focusing on him, what you bring to the table, if he doesn't go, you just go on your own. And you figure out how to improve your mental, emotional state. And you figure out how to break your patterns when you're getting hooked. When those things change and you're coming home and you're so loving and euphoric and so happy, the greatest impact is that. I'm sure you'd rather go through it with him. And so what I would do is I wouldn't push him and say, listen, I'm doing this for me. I know you don't need it. But, you know, some of the greatest, most successful people in the world from, you know, the Ray Dalios of the world. I'm sure he knows who Ray is and the greatest financial investors, the Paul Tudor Jones. This is the guy that has coached Paul Tudor Jones for, you know, the last, what has it been now? I guess 16, 18 years, right? And this is a gentleman that's worked with everybody from Serena Williams. And you kind of give him things he might be able to relate to people that are in sports or business but the most important thing is since this is in your home he's gonna see and hear this that's one of the cool things about this new format people go to my seminar and they fly to another city or country and they go four days and nights you know out of their mind people come out of their mind you'll see when you have the experience and then they got to drive or fly home and it's a few days later and they try to explain to their family member why they're feeling this way and it's kind of they're like are you from another planet but what I love about this format is your family's around. They'll walk through the room. They'll hear. They'll see. And here's what I'll do for you, just as a little gift for you personally for bringing up the question. I'm going to give your husband a ticket. So you stay on the line, Isabel. We'll make sure we make it. And so I'm going to give you a little gift. So you just pay for your ticket. I know you're already going. And then that way you're not losing anything if he doesn't show up. But 
my bet is like I've told you a couple times now, or maybe I've shared with more with a group that on on Zoom, but it's mind boggling to see what happens with families. You know, the children walk by and all of a sudden they're doing a meditation or whatever it is. You know, it's just it's one of my favorite things about this format. I, don't get me wrong, I love the live format, I love the energy of it. We generate that energy all around the world where people are in their home with their family. So don't push on him, attract him. <laughs> don't tell him he needs to make it clear he doesn't need it. He plants some seeds about the quality of people I work with in sports and business and finance. Uh, those are things he might be able to relate to and see it's not just motivation. If you can, watch Netflix. And then finally just say, you know, I happen to share our experience and so he gave us a ticket for you. You don't even, don't even have to pay for it. And then you can share that story later on about his transformation. That'll be the gift back to the community if you want to do that. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Huh? hours a week. All in is not, I work a Saturday twice a month. All in is all f***ing in. And you either are or you aren't. Understand every time you point the finger that what you say to your dreams and goals is, I'm about to put you on hold. You gotta take ownership. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. The only way to find it is to drown yourself. I take full responsibility and I'll do whatever it takes. I'll take ownership. I'll get up. I'll stay late. And that's why you point the finger because you don't like how the pain feels. In a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim, you're drowning. You're drowning in life. When you say, no, man, 